So we learned about three states of matter in class, you know, the solids, liquids, and gases, but there are other states of matter such as plasma, excitonium, electronic degenerate matter, and more I don't want to explain. So I'll briefly explain the three states of matter we learned in class, and one lesser known state of matter, plasma. So to start, let's talk about solids. Now solids have a fixed shape, mass, and volume. So this is a molecule. And this is a lot of molecules. All of the baseballs are held together by what we call bonds. So if I threw them, they all stay together like solids do. Now, solids are the coldest state of matter an object can be in. For example, water can be a solid at a temperature of 0 degrees Celsius. Some examples of solids are baseballs, my hand, or school. Liquids are different as they take the shape of their container, which basically means they don't have a fixed shape. As you see here, when I pour this glass of water in an empty cup, the water takes the shape of the cup it was poured in. Because the molecules inside of the fluid aren't held together, fluids take the shape of their container. These baseballs are my best examples of those molecules. Yeah, that was anticlimactic, but it explains why at a much larger scale with billions more molecules, fluids act like this. The liquid state of matter is like an intermediate between solid and gas. It's too hot to be a solid, and too cold to be a gas. Some examples of liquid are water, coke, and magma. Okay, moving on to a gas. Now, gases have no fixed shape or volume. Using the baseballs as an example for molecules again, gases either rise or fall depending on how dense they are. Now with a new image, you can see how the gas looks like it's flying around. An example of a gas is the air you're breathing right now as you watch this video. You might think gas is the hottest state of matter because the last photo had three states of matter. But on this photo, it demonstrates one more state of matter, plasma. Plasma is formed when intense heat is applied on gas. So if you have an electron and a positive ion, and add heat, electrons break free from their atoms, creating free electrons and positive ions. Fun fact, plasma can conduct electricity, which I won't explain why, but because copper attracts electricity, lightning can strike at the Statue of Liberty, for example, the main difference between gas and plasma is that plasma conducts electricity and gas doesn't. Lastly, some examples of plasma include the sun, lightning, and even the northern lights. Yeah, that's basically it. Anyone have any questions?